JT. Yes, they could. Cole Anthony. Working. Tossing it up. He got it. 13.9 left. Porter for this young man. But he continues to battle. I'm not going to lie, man. I was going to wait until the second game between these two individuals before I made this video. And I understand it's still just preseason. But man, did I learn a hell of a lot about both of these prospects just by watching this one preseason matchup. So what's going on, guys? Your boy Mike here. Guys, we've been on a wild upload streak. Most YouTubers do one video a day. I've been bringing you guys like one to two videos a day for the past like three weeks. So if you can take a moment to smash a like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe and turn on our notifications for a chance to win a PlayStation 5. Now, on top of that, we also started doing uh, YouTuber drama and whatnot on flight my tv so if you want to subscribe to that as well i highly recommend it if you're into you know the ramblings about what's going on with the popular nba 2k youtube group 2 hype i'm sure you guys would enjoy that now that we got all that out of the way cue the intro Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? So I don't know if you guys noticed, but over the past three days, the Orlando Magic faced off against the Charlotte Hornets multiple times. And a very underrated storyline of this matchup that even I wasn't looking for at the very beginning when I watched this matchup because I didn't think Cole Anthony would have as big of a role for the Orlando Magic as LaMelo Ball would have for the Charlotte Hornets. Which, by the way, here's an interesting tidbit that you should know. Cole Anthony was ranked higher than LaMelo Ball in high school. The thing is, LaMelo Ball has one thing that kind of eventually catapulted him into getting drafted higher than Cole Anthony. It's the fact that Cole Anthony is an average size point guard, six foot three, with a lower upside than LaMelo Ball, but a significantly higher floor than LaMelo Ball. And when you're in the NBA draft, chances are, and if you're picking in the top tier of the NBA draft, you're drafting based off of potential. There's something I always said, even when Cole Anthony got drafted, if the entire NCAA season continued on as it would have, Cole Anthony's stock may have risen or it would have fallen. It could have been either way. But I don't, I think a huge reason why Cole Anthony fell all the way to the 15th overall pick was mainly because we didn't have as much of a sample size on Cole Anthony. LaMelo Ball's season was practically finished by the time he declared for the NBA, and the Ball brand is already so freaking huge that even if you take a chance on LaMelo Ball and he turns into a mid-average player, well, at least the name LaMelo Ball will at least generate some hype around your roster for a little bit of time. So here's what I noticed. And when you look at the tail of the tape of both of these guards, they're both very different and they're very similar. Both are pretty much the same age, but Cole Anthony's only six foot three. LaMelo Ball is damn near six foot eight or six foot nine in shoes, which I still don't believe. We made a video on it. He's listed officially at six foot eight. I don't believe it. But when I was watching this matchup between Cole Anthony and LaMelo Ball, their first matchup, first of all, this was LaMelo Ball's best game so far. In this game, he scored 18 points off of 7 of 17 shooting, which is pretty much 41% from the field. He converted for 4 of 9 from 3, which is 44% from 3, which is good because he was considered to be a very eh, mid to average shooter coming out of the NBL. I understand a lot of Mike Mafia thinks that, hey, LaMelo Ball hit that shot from half court. He's a great shooter. Maybe he just didn't shoot as much in the NBL because his three-point percentage in the NBL was 29%. Nevertheless, when I compare these two players, there's something incredibly obvious that I saw. One of these players is clearly better than the other right now. The other player has a tremendously higher ceiling. You see, Cole Anthony looks to be way further along in his development. He has way more moves in his bag of tricks. He is able to get to the basket way easier than LaMelo Ball was. You literally saw him go at LaMelo Ball towards the end of the game. And I understand it's preseason. I understand both of these players are rookies. It's very soon to tell how both of their careers are going to end up. But so far in terms of development, in terms of who's the more complete player, that's Cole Anthony. If you needed further evidence, well, 
you have to look at the second game they faced against each other. In the first game, Cole Anthony didn't really make much of a mark. He had 13 points off a of four of seven shooting for an efficient 57% from the field. He converted three of four from three for 75%. But then you go to LaMelo Ball's latest game, and this is the game he just played in now, where he was one for 10 from the field, and well, the man only put up about four points. He went 0 for four from three, and this kind of looked like the LaMelo ball we were used to seeing the entire camp. He had four assists as well. He's putting up very similar numbers that his brother Lonzo put up in his rookie year with the Los Angeles Lakers, which is fine because the young man seems to have a great head on his shoulders, seems to really love basketball. There's only a couple of things I'm concerned about here. And this is where I feel like Cole Anthony has a huge leg up on LaMelo ball. You see Cole Anthony has a pretty good roster around him including a fellow guard in Markel Fultz that they're still trying to develop. I'm surprised the uh, Magic haven't given up on that, but you put Markel Fultz aside, you have a scorer in Terrence Ross, you have a pretty underrated center in Nikola Vucevic, who is also a stretch center, by the way. You have Aaron Gordon, who is absolutely dominant on the interior, who might get traded this season, granted. You have good defense in Al Farouk Aminu. You have a player that I'm really hoping could finally break out this season in Jonathan Isaac. The pieces around Cole Anthony are slightly better than the pieces around LaMelo Ball. Now, granted, he has Devontae Graham, he has playoff experience in Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward, but if there's one thing that I'm terrified about for LaMelo Ball, it's the fact that he has a lot of developing he still needs to do, and I think he could get there. The problem is the Charlotte Hornets haven't really had a good history of developing raw prospects. And I hate to say this, LaMelo Ball has a fantastic basketball IQ. The stuff that you can't teach, the kid has. The ability to get great assists off to his teammates, that's not something you could teach. That's a natural feel for the game. But the things that you do have to teach is the very same thing that the Charlotte Hornets have a history of not being able to teach. You look at right now, the New York Knicks just cut Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And in the 2012 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets selected Michael Kidd Gilchrist number two overall. And Gilchrist was a fantastic prospect, very high motor, came off of a championship winning Kentucky team, was a tremendously good slasher. The only problem was the dude just couldn't shoot. And it seemed as though as time went on, the Charlotte Hornets just kind of neglected him. And his development seemed very dependent upon himself, meaning they didn't go the extra mile to try to develop him further. They were just hoping that, hey, maybe one day someone will come in or he'll come into camp ready to take the next step. And he never did. Eight years after the NBA draft that he was drafted number two overall in, ahead of the likes of Bradley Beal, Andre Drummond, Damian Lillard, hell, even Harrison Barnes and Terrence Ross are still in the league. Michael K. Gilchrist is once again a free agent, and I'm very scared that the same thing is going to happen to LaMelo Ball. You see, he's a very raw prospect. Cole Anthony seems to be significantly more complete right now. That's not to say that the trajectory of these two individuals' careers cannot change. If you remember in the 2009 NBA draft, Brandon Jennings was selected with the 10th overall pick. James Harden was selected with the number three overall pick. Brandon Jennings looked like the better player for like the first year of his career. And well, you go all the way to the future and James Harden is the one getting paid $50 million a year and has the spotlight on him for not coming into training camp to do other extracurricular activities, whereas Brandon Jennings is no longer in the league. Obviously, injuries play a part in that. But what I'm trying to say is I'm not necessarily trying to say that Cole Anthony is going to have the better career. Rather, I'm trying to say that Cole Anthony is more developed so far and has come into the NBA with a better skill set. The Hornets essentially selected the player with the most upside in the entire NBA draft. I just hope that they could deliver on that upside and get LaMelo Ball where he needs to be in order for him to fully capitalize off of his superstar potential. Cole Anthony could be a better player than LaMelo Ball as well. It all really depends on how these two teams develop both stars. Regardless, if you haven't seen the highlights of this game, I really recommend you do so. And let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about LaMelo Ball and Cole Anthony. I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.